Welcome, friends. Today, we are doing another fragrance rotation video for the week ending the 26th of November, 2023. Incredible. And it is incredible, friends. It's incredible because this year, this month, feels like it's flown by. Even though stuff that happened earlier this month feels like it was ages ago. Um, this year has just disappeared. It's so bizarre. Um, but we continue, as we always do. And it is Sunday, and as such, we will do our fragrance rotation video. And so, starting on Monday, I wore an absolute classic of the channel. And a fragrance I was talking to Eugene about, was it yesterday after we had a shave? And this is Francesco Smalto Porom. This was released in 1990, 1988, I beg your pardon. Oh, 1987. Good grief. It's just, time is just slipping through my hands. I love this stuff, as is evidenced by the fact that this is got, what, a third left in? 30 mil? Maybe? Absolutely love it. This is, to me, a smoky Italian leather fragrance with lavender rosemary an outrageous note of licorice aniseed at the top um but it's it's all leather oak moss smoke smoke moss as i like to call it you know a smoky oak moss one of the one of the one of the finest of its of its genre really i love fragrances that do this it's absolutely beautiful, and I am very happy that I have backed it up to the point where I, I need not pay modern prices. You know, it lasts all day. Stunning. Just love it. Just absolutely love it. Never hear anybody talk about it, but if you can find yourself some, I highly recommend that you use it. Use it? I highly recommend that you buy it first and then use it. Don't use someone else's. I'm not sure about the legality of that. Um, and I am not qualified to give legal advice. Okay. Next up, I wore something extremely different. Extremely different. I went to meet my friend. She is eight and a half months pregnant. And... I decided to wear something I thought would be friendly for the pregnant nose. I was wrong. Because this changes on skin and does things all, and it lasts all day. And this is Melt My Heart by Strange Love. I do not have a full bottle because that way financial, ethical, moral ruin lies. I don't think I want to be paying... £750 a bottle? I mean, don't get us wrong, I've paid it before, but I don't know that I want to. Um, although I must admit, when I came home, I did look around on the internet to see if I could find one cheaper. There's a couple on eBay. And I thought, ooh. But I managed not to, you know. If this had been a couple of years ago, that bottle would already be here. Um... I've got two of these 15 mils. Whether that will prove to be enough over time, we will have to see. This is, the way I described it at the time is, this is what indie perfumers think they're making when they make these massive, massive fragrances with huge overdoses of stuff like iris, um, cacao, or oud, or anything. This is what happens when a real perfumer does that. And this is magnificent. It's utterly beautiful. It's by far and away the best from the house. In my opinion. Um, Silence the Sea is. I mean. It's, I mean. I mean. Just. Jesus. 
That is vile. Um, I don't recommend it. The rest of them are... I can, uh, no, not really. Not for me. Anyhow, this is Melt My Heart, which is a huge iris chocolate and oud kind of fragrance. Um, a little bit of musk. Something a little bit warm and skinny. Not like thin, but like skin-ish. Musky. It's got that kind of thing to it. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning perfume. Extremely well made. Speaking of which, I wore one of my favourites. There is no point in owning these perfumes if you're not going to wear them. And today... Not today. Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday, I wore Derby. By girl on, this is the little 30ml that Anuj gave me. It is of a later formulation, uh, or a later bottle, uh, than my Eagle. My Eagle is safely tucked away and will be broken out as soon as this is finished. I even did the vintage thing and splashed it on. How bizarre. Didn't really get the mint, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. Uh, the mint is much more prevalent in my other bottle. But I did get this kind of spicy, nutmeg, floral, mossy, round, rich, buttery leather fragrance. Just one of the very finest if not the finest leather. I think I put it at number one on my top ten leathers. And it's 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 hard to deny. Because it is that IBQ sheep leather thing. Guerlain's version of Koros. Guerlain's version of Antaeus. And just done with that Jean-Paul Guerlain finesse. That even Jack Paul's just doesn't have... Hmm. That's harsh because Antaeus, Antaeus is a sensational fragrance and it's hard to put anything between these. But this is like, this is when Guerlain was still like the perfume house to be. Uh, I went out and smelled some of the like new art, lot of materials line. Fuck knows what it's called. But um, shocking. Jean-Claude, jean Paul Guerlain would be very upset if he'd made them. Tobacco honey. Smells exactly like tobacco. Smells exactly like honey. Smells exactly like neither of those two fragrances talk to each other. Very strange. But that is one of the finest of its kind. I can tell you. Derby, that is. Okay. Thursday. Thursday. I got a compliment. In the wild. I went into someone's house. And in said house, a person said, My God, you smell fucking amazing. And like they were like, utterly, utterly delighted by this perfume. And I was like, get in. And I was delighted that they were delighted. So we delighted in this perfume for, for a good while. I mean, the person whose house it was was like, what the fuck is going on here? Who are these two idiots, like, just creasing with each other about how nice that smells? And this is Lone Star Memories, would you believe? Absolutely amazing. There is talk. There is a lot of talk by a lot of well-respected people. And you may consider it yourself that this is Andy Tower's actual best perfume. And it's not alleged. doesn't matter, can. Um... I have reviewed this. I would encourage you to go and watch it. It does smell exactly as the blurb that is given with the fragrance makes out. You know, a cowboy sitting by his campfire, making coffee after a long day on the plains. It's just absolutely spot on. Leather, little bit of smoke, vetiver, Something resinous, something floral, that carrot seed, carrot seed, sandalwood, dry, 
thing, the tower rod, which I don't like calling it the tower rod, but that's essentially what it is. Andy Towers' version of the Gerlinard, <laughs> his own version of the Gerlinard, which smells nothing like Gerlinard, by the way. Anywho, Friday. Friday, I wore something completely different again, and I have pulled out one of the big boys. Once again, friends, nearly every fragrance. I've dropped the lid. Thank God it wasn't the bottle. So I'll put the lid back on. Nearly every one of these fragrances is an absolute classic, and two of them, the two that aren't, could be considered future classics. But this is Ambre Nui by Dior. My CD bottle. That is the separate C and D on the top of the bottle. That It must be that way, I'm afraid. Sorry. Excuse me whilst I hydrate. This is a rosy... It's... It, hmm. the, it's meant to be amber grey. It's not meant to be like an amber, but it can come across a little bit like that. This is one of Demarche's finest creations. He was capable. He was capable, you know. It's just in the later years, he just pumped out shit. But this is from 2009. It originally came out as an eau de cologne. They're as rare as hen's teeth. The next year, it was re-released as an eau de parfum. Exactly the same perfume. Exactly the same perfume with the same performance. An absolute beauty. I decant mine into this little Travelo. Um, I've got to put it into a, a cheaper perfume vial first to get it into the Travelo atomizer, but because that's how they work. Um, rose, a little bit of something citric at the top, but no, no actual. Um, no actual like citrus, it's more like a juicy kind of vibe. Um, a little bit of pink pepper, a little bit of cedar, beautiful. Absolutely stunning fragrance back from when Dior used to make perfumes that smelled good. <laughs> okay. Saturday, yesterday. I wore Patchouli Noisette, not quite a classic, not yet. Maybe in future people will start to rave about it, I don't know. This is very much a departure for the for the brand. It doesn't smell like, it doesn't smell remotely like anything else they've got. They've gone down a completely different route. It's much darker, it's smokier, it's, it's I thought it had like quite a fuel-like aspect the first time I smelled it. Um, it's got very refined patchouli in it, uh, very specific patchouli, you know, they take the specific harvest, there's interviews on Eugene's channel that he very kindly invited me to be a part of, where we could ask them questions about said perfumes, and we did, um, and I ended up buying a bottle, because I thought it was gorgeous, and it is, but it's different. You know, it's the, it's the, what it's the, it's, it's the, I don't want to say it's like the prodigal son of the brand, but it's the tear away. It's the, it's the one that eventually comes good after being badly behaved for a while. You know, it's got this darkness to it. It's got this other, this other aspect about it. And it's really beautiful just in a very different way. Duro scared me by saying it smelled like a Middle Eastern fragrance, which it does have aspects of. It's just the the best quality Middle Eastern fragrance that there is, you know? So all you Middle Eastern fans, put your hands in your pockets instead of buying cheap shit and invest in one of these and see how it strikes you. A dark nuttiness, very interesting. The first... What was it? The first extraction of hazelnut or nut, like genuine natural nut in a fragrance. Ever, you know? So that's kind of cool. I mean, that's extremely cool. Let's not take the piss here. 
Okay then, last but not least, my scent of the day. My scent of the day is a classic from a classic house. This is Chanel's Sycamore EDT. I was very lucky, very lucky to find about it. Very lucky to find a bottle of it off my friend on eBay, who you are not aware of, and you will not be aware of, because he gets some really good stuff, although he does want good prices. If they don't sell, he usually brings the price down, and I can usually negotiate with him as well. But um, I got this for... Well, I got this for cheaper than what they go for now, but it wasn't cheaper than what they go for now at the time since Chanel put their prices up to such an egregious amount. Um, this is Vetiver. It's a really high-end Chanel version of Encre Noir. Um, it's got a lot more going on than Encre Noir, to be fair. There's tobacco, there's juniper, there's cypress, um, some kind of aldehyde. There's clearly got, it's got like vanilla in it because it's turning that colour, it's turning the vanilla colour, which is no bad thing. It looks very nice and it smells glorious. It really is. And it's perfect for this time of year. It's an autumn perfume. It's dark and brooding. Um, absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. And I love the fact, I love the fact that it's 200 mil so I can spray it on without getting scared. You know, and that is it, my friends. This has been my rotation for this week. Doesn't seem to have been a theme except them being mostly classics. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.